Hey everyone, today we're talking about place value. Yay, exciting! Let's take a look back at our place value chart. I know there were days you sat around wondering, if I have a 1 in the 1's place and a 1 in the 10's place, how do those numbers relate to each other? Or how does that 10 relate to 100? Or that 100 to 1000? Well, let's end the mystery. Let's investigate. So let's say I have 1 1 and I ask you, how do I get from 1 1 to 1 10? Well, we know that as we increase this 1, that eventually I'm going to get to 10, and it's not going to fit in the 1's place anymore. It becomes 1, 10. So how does my 1, 1 relate to my 1, 10? Well, I needed 10 of them. 1, 10 is 10 times 1, 1. And this will be similar as I move to greater place values. As I get up to 10, 10's, we know that becomes 100. So to get from 110 to 100, I need to multiply by 10. And a similar thing will happen, of course, as we move toward the thousands, because my 10 100s become 1000, and that's also multiplying by 10. So in summary, each place value is 10 times the place value to its right. Got it? Good. Now, let's talk about other fun things we can do with place value. We can use place value to help us name and represent numbers. Here, we can use the place value chart to help us identify a number by place value. We have 1,000, 200, 4 tens, and 3 ones. We can also identify a number by the way we say it, which is called the word form of a number. This number is 1,243. Sometimes you'll see numbers represented with place value blocks. For this number, we would have a thousands block. For the 1,000, we would have two hundreds blocks. For the 200, we would have four tens for the 40. And lastly, we would have three little cubes for our three ones. Another way to represent a number is by the sum of its place values. If we replace these blocks with the values they represent and write it as a sum, that's called expanded form. So here we would have 1,000 plus 200 plus 40 plus 3. And if you're wondering if we could break these values down a little bit more, well, you're in luck. We can. We can break them down into the products of their place value. For instance, a thousand is really just one group of a thousand, or one times a thousand. Two hundred is two groups of one hundred, or two times one hundred. Can you guess what the next one is? Well, four groups of ten is four times ten, and three ones is just three times one. And again, we can write that as a big old sum. This is called expanded notation. And if you're wondering if it works the other direction, of course it does. Here, we could write this number in standard form by doing all of the multiplication and then all of the addition, and we would end up with our value. But who wants to do all that multiplying and all that adding when we could just recognize that the expanded notation tells us exactly where each number goes? This 2 times 1,000 means we have a 2 in the thousands place. This 5 times 100 means we have a 5 in the hundreds place. And you guessed it, 7 times 10 means we have a 7 in the tens place, and 4 times 1 means we have a 4 in the ones place. And now you know many different ways to use place value to write and represent numbers.